know, you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. Okay, today's Daily Dose of Stupid yet again has to do with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She is a wonderful fountain of stupid that continues to spew out stupid on a daily basis. And as long as she's continuing to provide the stupid, we're going to continue pointing it out. So let's go ahead and go to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Really needs to brush up on her history here. Let's go to uh, her talking about FDR. When our party was boldest, the time of the New, New Deal, the Great Society, the Civil Rights Act, and so on, we had and carried super majorities in the House, in the Senate. We carried the presidency. They had to amend the Constitution of the United States to make sure Roosevelt did not get reelected. And, uh, we, you know, there were so many extraordinary things that were happening in that time that were uniting working people. All right, so did you spot the problem in that little statement? There's a couple of things, but I also wanted you to uh, notice in that video that if you're watching the people on looking, right when she says something completely wrong, there are the imbeciles behind her just nodding along. Yep, yep, that's right. So apparently her audience, which we all pretty much knew this, is just as ignorant as she is. But... She asserts that the 22nd Amendment, even though she doesn't say that it's the 22nd Amendment, we know that that's what she's talking about, about uh, presidential term limits, that that is what kept FDR from running again. There's only one problem with that. FDR died in 1945. The Second Amendment was ratified in 1951. By the way, Alabama, the last state to ratify that amendment to the Constitution, Therefore, you know, little personal tie there. But it's just funny to me that she is asserting that an amendment that was not ratified in the Constitution until six years after the man died is what kept FDR from getting a, I guess that would have been a fifth term. But anyway, it just shows she knows nothing about history. Even when she's talking about the history of her own party, she has no idea what's going on. But here's what's so funny about this. Let's pretend that she was not historically wrong. Let's just say that you take the actual facts out of it and pretend that what she's saying wasn't incorrect. Even if it wasn't factually incorrect, which it clearly is, because I, I guess she assumed that FDR was going to rise from the grave and run for another <laughs> term as, uh, I don't know, maybe she'd been watching way too much Walking Dead at this point. I'm not sure. But anyway... Even if you take that part out of the equation and her having her dates wrong, even what she's saying doesn't make sense. It doesn't ha even have a sense of logical consistency within her own statement, even if you don't look to anything else to fact check her. Why? Because she's saying it was at this time where we were having like super majorities in the Senate and super majorities in the, the House of Representatives. And, uh, and they passed an amendment to keep FDR from running for president again. Um, yeah, well, if the Democrats had supermajorities in the House and the Senate, as you're claiming, and, and by the way, she's actually correct on that, they did have really big majorities in both houses of Congress when that was taking place. Well, then how the heck did Republicans get an amendment to the Constitution passed? Because that's not even a majority vote. That's a much higher bar when it comes to the amount of votes that you need in the House and the Senate to get that ball rolling. And yet she's asserting that the Republicans are the problem because they're the ones that passed an amendment in a Democrat-controlled House and Senate to keep FDR from getting into... It doesn't even make sense even if you take out the fact that she's completely wrong on the facts. Even if you just were to observe her statement in a vacuum, it doesn't even make sense then. I don't see how this woman got elected. I just don't understand it. But anyway, she was also, because there is, again, so much, so much stupidity coming out of, of such a small little body. So much stupidity coming out of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She was also tweeting earlier today about the prices of croissants in the airport. 
No, I promise I'm not making this up. This is real. So this was was her thing that happened today. Um, croissants at LaGuardia are going for $7 a piece. Shock face. Yet some people think getting a whole hour of personal dedicated human labor for $15 is too expensive? And double question marks. Don't ask why. I, I have no idea. So the $7 a piece thing bothers her. And she's saying that that is justification for there being $15 an hour minimum wage. There are several problems with this. First of all, Washington Free Beacon actually did a fact check, and it turns out that croissants go for about $3.50 a piece in LaGuardia Airport, and the minimum wage in LaGuardia Airport is already $15 an hour. <laughs> and the average airport worker at LaGuardia makes $19 an hour, which, by the way, $3.50, even though it's much better than $7, $3.50 is an insane amount for a croissant. Go down to Publix Bakery. You can get like, I, th I think you can actually get a baker's dozen, so 13 croissants, which are delicious, by the way. I had to eat a lot of them when I was on chemo because it was like the only thing I could eat that didn't make me nauseous. So <laughs> you can buy like 13 croissants for, I believe, $2, maybe $2.50. So yes, $3.50 for a single croissant is ridiculous. It's not quite $7 like AOC thinks, but it is a lot of money. So let's ask ourselves, put on our thinking caps. Hmm. What could make the price of croissant so insanely high? Maybe the fact that there's a $15 an hour minimum wage in LaGuardia. Maybe that the average airport worker is making 19 bucks an hour. Maybe that's why the price of croissants is insane there. Maybe it also has to do with the fact that you have a government-controlled monopoly inside an airport. Why? Because when you pass through security, you can't exactly go somewhere else. So they essentially have a micro-monopoly where there's very limited competition within the airport itself to be able to do that. Now, you have to compete with other restaurants in the airport, obviously, but that's a much smaller pool than having to compete with the entire general public. And so the reason that air fo airport food is so much more expensive than regular food is that they create a little micro -mono a monopoly there in the airport. Because they know the people can't leave and they know they don't want to have to leave security and go somewhere else. And because of that, they're able to charge more than they normally would. That combined with the fact that these people are making $15 an hour to make croissants might have something to do with the reason that your croissant price is insane. So let's also look at, in response to this, once several people pointed out that she was completely wrong about this, instead of saying, whoops, guys, I made a mistake, or showing any kind of humility at all, or self-correction, she, of course, did what AOC always does, which is play the victim. So she's saying, the GOP taking every tweet so earnestly is making my point for me. It's not an argument against the price of a croissant, it's about the value of human worth, but I guess the idea is foreign to them since their policies treat people as disposable anyway. Okay, so let's break that down. She's saying that the argument is not at the price of the croissant. So in other words, she's saying, okay, well, they proved me wrong that the croissant's not actually $7. And so I'm going to say, well, it was never about the croissant. Well, if it's not, then why did you bring it up? That was the whole point of the last tweet. <laughs> if you take out the price of the croissant, the tweet doesn't make any sense. So what she's doing here is backpedaling after she was made a fool of by people just reading her tweet and showing that it was incorrect. And so she tries to backpedal that, and then she's making an argument about, well, the thing is, even though I was completely wrong, it's not an argument about the croissant, it's about the value of human life. Okay, well, that's weird for a number of reasons. First of all, the big logical fallacy that you're committing here is that you're conflating two things that are not the same thing. The value of a human life is not equivalent to the value of that person's labor. And this is easily provable. In fact, I did this on Twitter in response to this. One of the things that I mentioned here is I gave this example. A person's life is not equivalent to the value of their labor. Let's say that there's a barber. And let's say he's a really good barber. 
He's so good that he charges a hundred bucks a haircut. Okay, well, the thing is, I don't want that haircut because it's too expensive. Just too rich for me. I, I'll have to go somewhere else to get my haircut. I'm sure he's a fine barber, but his because he's putting such a high price on it, his labor is essentially worthless to me because I'm saying, I don't value your labor enough to pay you that much, which is essentially what an employer says when somebody comes to him demanding $15 an hour for flipping hamburgers. He's saying, no, no, your labor is not worth $15 an hour to me, so I'm going to have to go a different direction. I'm going to have to go with somebody cheaper or automate or something else. But my point is, what you are saying when you don't accept that term is that you're saying your your labor is not valuable enough to me for me to pay that to you. So in this analogy, if there's this barber who's charging 100 bucks for styling my hair, I would have to say, nope, sorry, can't do it. Your your labor is not that valuable to me. However, if I'm standing in that barber shop and some crazy person jumps in there with a gun and tries to shoot the guy, I don't know for whatever reason, I would like to think, I don't know this for sure because it's hard to tell unless you've been in that situation, but I would like to think that I would probably dive in front of the gun trying to save this man's life because that's what I'm supposed to do as a Christian. I'm supposed to give of myself to other people. I'm supposed to love other people more than I love myself. And so his life is worth more to me than my own. That's not the same thing as saying that his labor is as valuable to me as my own. Because his labor is not worth $100 to me, but his life is. And this is actually something that I find so hilarious about the arguments on the left. Because when we hear anti-capitalist arguments, one of the first things we always hear is, well, a person's value shouldn't just be uh, determined by how much that they can make. Their value, their value as people shouldn't be determined about what they can do in the labor market. And then you have Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez coming out and saying the exact opposite. She's saying that a person's life value and the value of their labor is exactly the same thing. And if you're not paying people enough for their labor, it means you don't value them as people. That's not necessarily true. For example, I don't get manicures. So a manicurist, their labor is literally worth zero to me. I would not pay them a quarter to manicure because I don't want one. But just because their labor is not valuable to me doesn't mean that they are not valuable to me. It doesn't mean that I think that they're useless as a person. It doesn't mean that I think they're subhuman. It just means that I don't want whatever particular labor they're selling. And so they're conflating these two ideas of human value and the value of their labor as being one and the same, despite the fact that they are usually the party that constantly accuses Republicans of doing that, that constantly accuses conservatives and libertarians of doing that, even though we don't. We understand that there is a distinction there, that a person's value and the value of a person's labor is not the same thing. And here's another thing that really hacks me off. At the end of that, she says that their policies, talking about the GOP, all their policies treat people as though they're disposable. And yet, she supports policies, and she's from the state of New York and their new abortion law, which she prays, where you can literally pull a person apart and throw them in a garbage can. Do not preach to me about treating people as though they are disposable. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist, which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.